What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So, um, I know I put in the community chat why I didn't upload yesterday. And um, I wasn't going to upload today either. But I'm going to go ahead and try to upload some videos today. Uh, in particular, I'm going to try to knock out some of these top 10 Power 4 videos. And um, maybe some other videos too today. Alright, so... Just do a brief recap at uh, number 10 and top 10 power forwards I had Dolph Shays, number 9, Kevin McHale, number 8, Dan Essel, number 7, Elvin Hayes. So at number 6, I have Dirk Nowitzki. All right, so this is a change from earlier uh, when I did uh, my top 10 power forwards listing some years ago. Um... I still think he's a great player, but I have a little bit lower top 10. Um, just from reading more about various other players, how dominant they were in their respective eras, uh, Dirk was still a great, great forward. Uh, he's definitely top 10 all time, in my opinion. Um, he's probably the greatest European player of all time. Um, and he was revolutionary, all right? Uh, not to say we didn't have big men who couldn't shoot from outside before him. You know, we had the, the Sam Perkins and the Derek Coleman and the Terry Mills and even the Sabonis who would occasionally step out the three-point range and knock it down, but not as prolifically and as accurately or as efficiently as Dirk Nowitzki. We never really saw a dude seven feet tall before that could shoot from outside like that. Um could handle the ball as well as he could. Um, not to say he was the most athletic guy, but still, at that time, in the early 2000s, we hadn't seen someone uh, like Dirk Nowitzki. Um, Dirk comes from a very athletic family. I believe his mother played basketball. I believe his sister played, ba played basketball. His father, I think, was either soccer or handball. So he came from a very athletic background. He was typical for most centers uh, or power forwards. He was taller than everybody growing up. And, of course, uh, as he became a young man, uh, he had that height advantage naturally. Uh, coaches are going to evaluate you and look to see whether you could, you know, potentially be a basketball player. And over in Germany, uh, he worked very hard to be a really good player. Um, you know, over in their league in Germany, their independent their uh, league over there, uh, he started off over there, and he was very good, and he dominated over there. But Dirk had some growing pains when he went over to the NBA. I think it was the 98-99 draft. I believe that's the draft where uh, Dirk came over to the NBA. At the time, I remember he was drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks, but he was traded in a, uh, in a, in a draft night, a pick. Well, he was traded from Milwaukee to Dallas in exchange for the late Robert Tractor trailer. And uh, Dirk's first year in the NBA, he struggled, right? Uh, he only averaged something like eight points a game. He shot only 40% from the floor, only 20, 21% from three-point range. Uh, he turned the ball over a lot. He was beaten up by, uh, you know, guys that were stronger than him. Um, a lot of guys were faster than him. He was terrible on defense uh, at first. And also, the Dallas Mavericks, ever since their prior heyday in the 80s with Rolando Blackman and uh, Mark McGuire and James Donaldson and uh, Brad Davis, I think his name, a point guard, uh, Derek Harper, ever since the 80s when they had their heyday, they, for the most part, were a terrible team in the 90s. With the exception of the Jimmy, the JJJ era, era with Jason Kidd, Jamal Mashburn, and Jimmy, uh, and, uh, 
uh, what's the third guy? Um, Jim Jackson. He was one of the worst teams in the NBA at that time. And he had such a terrible rookie year that he actually contemplated quitting the NBA and uh, going back to Germany. But he stayed with it. Um, he improved dramatically his second year in the NBA. Um, second year, he had 17.5 points per game. He's going on with six and a half re rebounds per game. His shooting went up from 40% to 46%. Uh, he improved tremendously his three point range, 38%. And um, I believe it was his third year in Dallas that they really started seeing the turnaround. There were a lot of changes going on at that time. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, when he was traded in draft night, to Dallas, they also had acquired Steve Nash in a trade, I believe, from Phoenix. And I believe shortly thereafter, Ross Perot uh, Jr. Uh, sold the team to Mark Cuban, and the franchise went in a totally different direction. And all these things just added up together, and they became a, a really, really good team. Um, they went from being a horrible team to a team usually around 50 to 55 wins. And um, in Dirk's third year, they had, he averaged 21.8 points and 9.2 rebounds. But it was his fourth season, the 2001-2002 season, where he finally became an all-star. He averaged 23.4 points, but going along with 9.9 .9 rebounds. And from 2001, 2002, until, uh, I'd say 2009, 2010, during that time period, Dirk Nowitzki averaged 24.7 points per game, 9 rebounds, 2.9 assists, 1 steal, 1 block, he shot nearly 48% from the floor, 38% from 3, and a fantastic 89% from the foul line. Um, Dirk usually upped his numbers in the postseasons, well, in particular, uh, in rebounds. Um, he was a, statistically a more dominant rebounder in the playoffs than he was during the regular season. Um, I never could quite figure out why that was the case. Maybe, you know, um, maybe he focused more on uh, that aspect of the game during the playoffs. I don't know. Maybe he just played harder. Um, I, I don't know, but during this time period, Dirk was, was gaining a reputation for being one of the top players in the game, and uh, like I said before, he was very difficult to guard in a lot of ways because of his height advantage, um, being seven feet tall, and often on the perimeter, you really can't do much with a guy like that. Um, like I said, he wasn't the fastest guy, but if you put a big on him, he generally had the speed advantage over then more, you know, lumbering centers who might be 7'2", 290, or whatever. He still had the speed advantage over those guys, and everybody else was quicker than him. He had a height advantage, and, you know, he perfected this, this fallaway jumper off one leg. And um, it was one of the more un unguardable and unblockable shots in the history of the NBA. Um, but Dirk did have some critics, all right? Um, some people said that he was a little bit soft, okay? Uh, Dirk didn't have what it took in the postseason to get the job done. And he did have talent on his team. You know, uh, for a while, there was Steve Nash, him, Michael Finley, that earlier Mavericks team. Uh, then later on, after Steve Nash left, 
they had a variety of different players there. Um, but, you know, Dallas was a really good regular season team, but oftentimes they would struggle in the playoffs. And when I mean struggle, I mean they would struggle against, they would struggle to get over the hump, whether it was against the Sacramento Kings earlier on or the San Antonio Spurs or maybe the Lakers or whoever, whoever they were playing. They, they couldn't get over the hump. 2006-2007, uh, Dirk Nowitzki won the league's MVP award, but it came at a low point for him, I would say, having lost in the first round to that upstart Golden State Warriors team. Um, by 2010, time was beginning to run out for Dirk at that time. I believe he was 33 years old. And his years as a star player were were limited. And um, the 2010-2011 playoff run that that Dallas Maverick team had um, was very memorable. Al although Dirk didn't always shoot the ball well in every particular game, in particular the NBA Finals, what I remember about that that run was Dirk had a different mindset. Um, whereas sometimes in the playoffs it could seem a little bit a little bit too easy going. This Dirk I remember was scowling. Um, if he didn't make his shots, he was determined to get to the foul line, determined to uh, you know, he was determined to help out in some way rebounding, be a decoy, whatever it was. But he got a lot of help um, from other guys. Jason Terry stood out in that playoffs. Uh, Jason Kidd played very well. Uh, J.J. Barrera had his moments. Um, it was a team effort. It wasn't just Dirk Nowitzki. And ultimately, Dirk won the NBA championship. And... Uh, it's the one championship Dallas Mavericks have, and it's largely because of Dirk Nowitzki and that you know and the efforts of that team. Um, for the rest of his career, Dirk slowly diminished as a basketball player. Um, the Dallas Mavericks, for the most part, stayed a good team, but not like one of the upper echelon teams. And um, one thing I remember about Dirk was that <clears throat> he was not a selfish guy. When the team needed him to do so, I remember him taking a pay cut so that they could be able to, to Mark Cuban and the organization, be able to sign some other guys, you know, for the rebuilding process as Dirk got older. And um, one thing I do remember about the end of his career, I think he kind of was, this is my opinion, I think he was kind of forced out the NBA a little bit. You know, like, I remember that being Dwayne Wade's, Dwayne Wade came into that season announcing that would be his last year. And, um, I remember Dirk not saying anything for a while, but it was like it was just expectation that was going to be his last year. Um, he had been, like I said, he had been diminishing for quite some time, almost to the point where sometimes he was like a liability. So I don't know whether or not, maybe he was kind of forced into it, but it was the right time anyway. Um, so during the, later on during the 2018-2019 season, uh, Dirk Nowitzki announced his retirement from the NBA and from basketball. Um, at the time of his retirement in 2018, 2019, Dirk had scored 31,560 points, which meant that only Kareem Abdul Jabbar, at the time, only Kareem Abdul Jabbar, I believe Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, and I think LeBron were the only guys that scored more points than him at that time. 
or LeBron was close, something that ran. They were the only guys, and subsequently they're the only guys since then that scored more points. He grabbed over 11,000 rebounds and uh, dished out over 3,600 assists for an average of 20.7 points per game, 7.5 rebounds, and 2.4 assists per game. In the Olympics, he represented Germany in the World Cup in 2002. And I believe they won the bronze in 2002 and the silver in Eurobasket in 2005. All right, so as far as his accolades are concerned, of course, he won the championship in 2011. He was finals MVP in 2011. He won the league MVP in 2007, 14-time NBA All-Star, four-time All-NBA First Team, five-time All-NBA Second Team, three-time All-NBA Third Team. He joined the 50-40-90 club in 2007. He won the three-point contest in 2006. He was named the NBA Teammate of the Year in 2017. That might have been the year I was talking about where he took a pay cut to help the franchise out. Um, he was the FIBA World Championship MVP in 2002, the FIBA Eurobasket MVP in 2005, three-time FIBA Eurobasket top scorer in 2001, 2005, and 2007, six-time Euroscar uh, Player of the Year, two-time FIBA Europe Men's Player of the Year, 11-time All-Europeans First Team, 9 times All-European Power Forward of the Year, Mr. Europa, Mr. Europa, what is that, Europa? It's gotta be Mr. Europa, Player of the Year in 2005, and um, he holds the record for most years playing with one franchise with 21, breaking the previous record held by Kobe Bryant. Uh, the guy that I think is the sixth greatest power forward in the history of the NBA, Dirk Nowitzki. 